Good evening from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is August the 22nd of 2021, and our worship this evening is structured from the daily devotion for evening from the Book of Common Prayer, as well as a litany of the Blessed Sacrament. You can download the bulletin, the worship bulletin, from the St. John's website and also from the social media post on Facebook and YouTube. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. A reading from John's Gospel. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We have here in John's Gospel a bold claim about who Jesus is. When we consider the totality of John's Gospel, we are presented with the apostolic profession that Jesus is God. Jesus is God who has become a human being. In the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus fleshes this out a little bit, pardon the pun, Jesus says he is the substance which is life itself. And when we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, as we do in the Holy Eucharist, Jesus abides in us. Jesus lives in us. Not everybody who heard Jesus make this claim 2,000 years ago accepted it. Not everybody who hears these words today accepts this truth about Jesus. Some even deem it offensive. What the church has understood and taught about Jesus down the ages is actually quite scandalous when we think about it, even to some, many, maybe, inside the church. Who is Jesus, really? And what difference does it make in my life, in the life of the world, whether Jesus was and is, in fact, fully God and fully human? 
Couldn't we just consider Jesus to be a good teacher and leave it at that? Please allow me to share a couple of unoriginal thoughts about Jesus. As a baptized follower of Christ who is privileged to minister as a priest of Jesus Christ, I hope, I pray that I never say anything original about Jesus. Instead, I offer two quotations from novelist, Anglican layperson, and Christian apologist C.S. Lewis. Quotations I invite you to consider when praying about who Jesus is. Here's what Lewis said about Jesus in the book, Mere Christianity. This is C.S. Lewis. I'm trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic, on the level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. <clears throat> you can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God, but let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Now it seems to me, Lewis writes, now it seems to me obvious that he was neither a lunatic nor a fiend, and consequently, however strange or terrifying or unlikely it may seem, I have come, I have to accept the view that he was and is God. The second quotation from C.S. Lewis is this, and it's a lot shorter. Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. C.S. Lewis. What we do here at St. John's in the name of Jesus Christ is of infinite importance. If not for Jesus, where else and to whom else would we go to process all the struggles we experience in life and to understand what true joy in life is? If not for Jesus and cultivating a relationship with him on a daily basis, where would we turn in times of intense grief to find hope? Is eternal salvation found in politics, education, economics, science, art, nature? As much as each of these might add, and they do add to life, they are not life in and of themselves, individually or collectively, and as offensive as my words about what the church understands about the personhood of Jesus may be to some, we in our day have to make a choice, much like C.S. Lewis did, much like Jesus' first disciples did in their day. Jesus asked them, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Let us now affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. And from the St. John's family, we pray for Anna, Sam, Virginia, Emma, Ferris, William, Karen, Gloria, Bill, Alan, Jane, Sharon, Ted, the Vestry, the Altar Guild, Buildings and Grounds, our Children's Youth and Family Ministries, the Choir, the Shared Ministries Development Team, the Finance Team, for Al, Amy, Kevin, and Reverend Pam. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Josie Keenan, Marsha Braun, Violet Harrell, Sue Marquardt, Ray Ilka, Sarah Hoffman, and Paul Schaub. We pray for those who may be celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Eastern Michigan, and Skip, our assisting bishop. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we remember today the Anglican Church of South America. We also pray for the Diocese of Haiti, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Saginaw. We also pray for St. John's Grand Haven, Jared Kramer, rector. Locally, we pray for our fellow Episcopalians at St. Matthew's and St. Paul's, as well as our partners with Interfaith Saginaw. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in, the un in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to glorify to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God. Blessed Jesus, Word of God incarnate. Blessed Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, Jesus, whom the heavens cannot contain, yet present on the altar. Jesus, adored by the heavenly host, yet ready to hear our prayers. Jesus, veiling your glory that we may come close to you. Jesus, both priest and sacrifice living bread that whoever eats will live forever. Jesus, manna in the wilderness. Jesus, broken bread that feeds the multitude. Jesus, bread that comes down out of heaven. 
Jesus, bread that gives life to the world. Jesus, the good shepherd who laid down your life for your sheep. Jesus, giving your own body and blood to be our food. Jesus, revealed in the breaking of the bread. From measuring your omnipotence and grace by our weak understanding. From doubts, distractions, and irreverence. From unworthy and unfruitful receiving. From hardness of heart and ingratitude. From all lack of charity and refusing to welcome others as you have welcomed us. Hear us, Lord, and grant that we may know your presence, that we may acknowledge our dependence on you, that we may seek to know and do your will, that we may recognize and give thanks for every blessing you give us, that we may come to you in repentance for the wrongs we have done, that we may approach this ineffable mystery in perfect charity with all, that we may be ready to lead a new life, that we may walk in the way of your commandments, that receiving this great gift we may grow in gratitude and trust, that the wounded may find healing, the despondent hope, and the fearful courage that we may see your image in one another, that as we adore you here, we may hereafter be ready to stand in your presence. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, bearer of our sins, Jesus, redeemer of the world, Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.